The purpose of this video is to give a brief demo of cutting a record on my second record lathe. This lathe is almost identical to the first from a few years ago, with a few improvements. The torque tube of the recording head, the bit that holds the stylus, is made of metal this time instead of plastic, and the control units for the platter and the linear rail have been simplified and housed together in a single box. There are three things that increase with a move from embossing to cutting. Complexity, cost, and, if things go well, quality of the recorded sound. The embossing process, which I've been using and developing to date, is comparatively simple, in that no material is removed from the disc surface. The embossing stylus merely displaces material to either side of itself, like ploughed furrows in a field. Cutting, on the other hand, removes a microscopic thread from the disc surface, which has to be collected or made away with somehow, very quickly, so that it doesn't travel on the disc as it rotates and become tangled with the stylus on the next time round. Professional systems employ a tiny suction pump mounted adjacent to the stylus, which hoovers up the thread immediately. This is one problem that I still have to solve. I tried using a medical aspirator, cheap off eBay, but the static attraction between the disc and the thread is surprisingly strong, and the aspirator couldn't supply enough suction to detach it. So, for now, I've resorted to what home recordists had to do in the 1940s. Use a paintbrush to gently push the thread towards the centre, where it should start collecting around the centre pin. These professional styli for record cutting often come with a tiny coil of wire cemented around the gemstone. This is a tiny heater, and when collected to a suitable circuit, it provides a controlled amount of heat directly to the stylus, softening the disc surface and easing the path of the stylus through it. Using heating in this way must only be done if the thread removal mechanism is reliable, because if a ball of thread collects on a hot stylus, it can melt into a lump and become impossible to remove. My solution for now, use a vivarium heat lamp suspended over the spinning disc to heat the disc surface to somewhere between 30 and 40 degrees. The other issue, as I mentioned, is cost. The price of a cutting stylus is approximately twice that of an indenting stylus, and, for obvious reasons, it is wise to use the blank discs recommended by the stylus manufacturer. These start at a little over £2 each, again roughly twice the price of home-cut polycarbonate discs for embossing. 